Hello, welcome to my channel. My name is Misty. This is attempt two <laughs> filming this video. Hopefully it works. But anyways, um, today we are talking about monthly book picks for my girls. I've had a lot of requests actually to start sharing more about read alouds or books that we're doing. So I am doing that. And I'm starting with something that we do on a monthly basis, which I'll explain here in one second. But first I want to say, um, that if you're into books, just know I have plenty of videos on my channel for you to go through to check out those books. And I have more coming in the future, so make sure you hit the subscribe button and the bell so that you know when I upload about books. But all right, let's go ahead and jump into all of the books we're going to talk about today. Now first, let me explain what this book picks thing is because I started this a few months ago and it's going well. And what it is, um, is that we used to have a whole full collection of library books in our kids' room. Uh, where they had their own little personal library. They could pull out books as they pleased and read them. However, I found that when you give them a lot of options, it just goes south really quickly. Books were never getting put back up because it was overwhelming to deal with for them and they were just kind of getting trampled on all over the floor. So to solve this problem, we started to store only five books at a time per child, plus five that I want to read to them. And I plan to start showing these books to you regularly. Now this is April's picks, so just know in the future I'll try to upload them sooner after they pick them at the beginning of the month. But here we are, it's the end of the month. I'm still going to show you these books. And if you like book videos like this, hit the thumbs up so I know that this is the type of video you want me to keep making. But let's go ahead and talk about this. Now I have two kids, they are six and three. So we're going to talk about my six-year-old's books right now. And this first book is her in a nutshell, totally her. And that is 101 Ways to Gross Out Your Friends by Julie Huffman. And also I will link all the books down below for you guys if you want to check out any of them and possibly purchase them for your own home library. And it's a book with literally science experiments, jokes, activities, and recipes of lo that lo with loads of gross gooey fun. Sorry there. I'm sorry if I'm talking fast, but um, I still have to go cook dinner before the girls get home from their soccer practice. So yes, it's just a book full of interactive gross things. <laughs> now book number two for my six-year-old. This is a very loved book, getting worn down from how much we love it. And that is Alice the Fairy by David Shannon. This is a really cute book about, um, I guess you could say she's a bit mischievous, but the whole book is based on a little girl who really makes a lot of imaginative play out of her everyday life. And Alice is a temporary fairy, not a full-time fairy because you have to go to school for that, but she is a temporary fairy. And it's a book where she just turns, like I said, everyday situations into magic. So like this page says, one time my mom made cookies for my dad, so I turned them into mine. So it's a humorous book full of just cute stories about a mischievous little girl and how she twists things to be this enchanted world of hers. So that is another book that we highly love all about imagination. All right, book number three for my six-year-old is The Little Shop of Monsters by R.L. Stein and Mark Brown. If you are a 90s baby, you know all about R.L. Stein, maybe 80s babies too, I guess. I'm a 90s baby. And this is a really cute book that kind of helps your kids see uh, monsters in a not so scary way. And it's this book where the author talks to you about how you may be so scared of monsters, but maybe you should come with him to check out The Little Shop of Monsters. And inside you have a humorous way to learn about each type of monster. And we actually do it very interactively. Like one says he's the snacker and you just can't shake hands with him because he'll eat your hand. And it's done in a funny way. I know it sounds scary, but you, it's a funny way that it's done. And so I will kind of like snatch at them. Um, there's the, there's monsters that tickle. So we'll do the tickling stuff monsters that laugh and the sleeper peeper we whisper so it's very interactive you can make it as interactive as you choose um there's even a page where they have to hurry up and quickly turn it so i do highly recommend this book why am i reviewing it this is not a review book I'm, review video i'm sorry guys i will stop reviewing the book now and let you just decide if you want to get it all right next is this book just ate my dog by richard byrne and this is another interactive book that we absolutely love they probably are gonna pick these books repeatedly over the year. I'm sorry if you see them a lot over the next year. This is a story about a book that is doing things like this says, this book just ate my dog. And it's this book of this little girl trying to get her dog back after the book eats it, if you can see there. And she ends up getting a ton of help, but every time somebody comes to help her, the book eats them too. And so it's a really cute book and it's interactive in order, um, I won't really give it away, but basically it's an interactive way to get all the people back out of the book. And it's a very cute, humorous book. My daughter clearly likes humor. 
All right, book number five for my six-year-old is River Rose in the Magical Lullaby by Kelly Clarkson. Um, this book is cute. I'm not the hugest fan of it. Stop reviewing books, Misty. This isn't a book review. Uh, my kids love it, obviously. And River Rose is a little girl, super cute here. And in this book, her mother would sing to her a lullaby every single night and she drifts off into this dream world and it just kind of takes you through um, everything that happens in her dream. So it's a really cute little book. Okay, now moving on to Savannah's books for my three-year-old here. We have Even Aliens Need Snacks, written by Matthew McElligot, I think is how you say it. And like I said, these will all be linked down below for you guys if you want to check them out. But it's a really cute book about a little boy who loves to cook and he helps his mom often. But when he creates his own concoctions, nobody wants anything to do with them. They're quite gross. Um, so he goes out to the streets to set up his little restaurant and he realizes nobody wants anything to do with his food. Until one night he gets a special visit from aliens and he learns that aliens absolutely love his crazy concoctions. And it's a really adorable book. We read that one a lot too, actually. Book number two for my three-year-old is I Love You This Much. She really likes these puffy books, if you know what I'm talking about. I don't know if you can see it on the camera, but it's like a puffy material. And it's one of those cute books that poetically just tells you how much um, someone loves you. So for instance, it says, I would do anything to cheer you up when you're feeling down. I'd put on a funny show for you and dress up as a clown. I'd get my friends to dress up in silly circus style and then wobble on a tightrope just to try to make you smile. So it's a very cute romantic book in a sense. Um, and she likes those gushy type books. This next book, I'm not a fan of. The illustrations are amazing, but I don't know. The book just wasn't everything I thought it would be, unfortunately. Um, it's called I Got Rhythm by Connie Schofield Morrison. And like I said, the illustrations are adorable. Like you see this girl, she's freaking cute. Um, so it's this book about a little girl who just finds the sound in everything that she sees and hears to create music in her head in a sense. So she finds the sounds of the city to be music to her ears. So it's just a really cute book in that way, taking you through all of the sounds and some dancing at the end. But I don't know, this book just didn't deliver for me the way I hoped it would, but clearly, the kids like it. And this one's called Oh If Only by Michael Foreman. Now this book is kind of like if you give a mouse a cookie where it has like a cause and effect in a chain of events type of book. So it's about a little boy who's like, oh, if only I had stayed home that day, you know, the dog wanted to play. And because the dog chased the ball, the ball ran down the hill, scared the old lady's cats. And then they, you know, run into these birds and scared the birds. The birds then scare this um, parade going on. So it's just one of those chain of events type books. And it's another humorous book that girls laugh at a lot. All right. So the very last book we're going to talk about is Kay Thompson's Eloise. And it's a very long book, guys. Um, it's a classic one that a lot of people like, but I have to end this video. This camera is acting weird. I'm so sorry. I've got to go. This video, literally, I've had to film it twice and I can't trust this video to even save. That is the last book. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Sorry, I'm cutting it short like this, but I want you guys to have a wonderful day. Don't forget to subscribe for all the homeschooling videos and like this button if you like this button. No, what? <laughs> like this video if you enjoy book videos. So I know to keep making them in the future. I'll see you guys in the next video. Have fun homeschooling. Bye. Mm -hmm.